my father took me to New York okay. at the age of 13. 13. That was, was very there. young. Yeah, and I was there for 14 years. I came back when I was 27. Okay. Well, coming to Ghana really it was never the plan. It mm -hmm. just happened by, you know, it was an opportunity that I had to jump on, which was to come down here and build a gym. Okay. Um, was a gym? A gym, yes. Why a gym? I'm still going to do it. So I said, in order for me to move here, I have to own a house because okay. that's your biggest headache mm -hmm. in Ghana. The, you know, shout out to work, you know what you guys are doing. Yeah. I've seen the headaches way before I came to Ghana. Mm -hmm. I, you know, people sending money home to get a house built or yeah. try to buy a land and get scammed over and over again. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's a common thing. It is. Um, the long term goal is, uh, you know, so I run five different companies. Yeah. One is between, uh, that one we don't know about it, I've yet to launch it. Bringing people together, okay. um, especially the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So all the cheating in the long run, that's what I see, all the cheating, the scams, it will reduce dramatically. Okay. That are people like yourself, uh, Royal Kingdom, then yeah. people like me, selling new properties, mm -hmm. being in the public sphere and people knowing that this is how things are being done. In the long run, all the people who are not doing things the right way will go under. The mm. only way to actually uh, stand in this market in the long run is to buy, by doing the right thing. Yeah. Or nobody's going to come to you mm -hmm. because finding the right people will become so accessible mm -hmm. in the long run. And I'm building, you know, my name, the SEO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in the long run, when you talk about properties in Ghana or business, I want you to see my face first. Okay. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what every video is about. Yeah. That's what everything I do, I have that in my mind. So mm -hmm. in the long run, yeah, the name the name Rosh Rosh Asari should should stand for yeah. you know, integrity. If you wanna do business, if you talk to these guys, mm -hmm. you got you figure it out. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. Hi guys, welcome back to the Royal Kingdom Estate platform. I'm so elated because today we're back with another Motherland series. It's been a while. We shared an episode with you guys and this one, I can promise you it's going to be so amazing. So for the people watching the channel for the first time, the Motherland series is a series where we profile, you know, mostly diasporans. We check out people's journey to the Motherland, mostly our clients as well and people that are affiliated with the company one way or the other and today i have a very bright amazing young man in our head office and he's the one that we're going to be talking to he's part of the family um we've had some conversations prior to this 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 interview actually was supposed to happen a long time ago <laughs> but finally we're on to it and i'm so excited to listen to him hear his journey and i'm sure you can pick a thing or two from his inspiring story. So ladies and gentlemen, all together, let's welcome Rush Asari to the platform. Hi Rush. Hi Ajwa. How are you? I'm doing well on your end. I'm good too. Welcome, finally. Thank I'm you. I'm so excited we're doing this. <laughs> Longer with you, huh? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I know the majority of our audience, you know, know you because, I mean, YouTube is a small space. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah, yeah. And most of your audience are our audience as well. But for the people that have never heard of you, have right. never seen you, are just, you know, chancing on this video for the first time, just let's let's run it back all the way to the beginning. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that you're African American. You're Ghanaian, right? Ghanaian American. Right? Ghanaian American. Right. Yes, but where were you born? Right. How was the journey like? Why did you decide to move to Ghana? And how has it been so far? Right. Yeah. So I was I'm a Ghanaian American. Mm -hmm. I was born in Ghana, um, particularly in the mountains area. Okay. okay it can help him. Yes, oh. so where you guys love, that's mm -hmm. where I'm from. And uh, my father took me to New York okay. at the age of 13. 13, that was, was very there. young. Yeah, and I was there for 14 years. I came back when I was 27. Okay. But um, while I was there, of course, I went to school, high school, mm -hmm. joined the military navy right after that. Okay. Um, and then after that, they might undergrad and master's in accounting. Yeah. Worked for KPMG for a couple of months and then okay. left and came to Ghana. Well, coming to Ghana really it was never the plan. It mm -hmm. just happened by, you know, it was an opportunity that I had to jump on, which was to come down here and build a gym. Okay. Um, with some, a gym? A gym, yes. Why a gym? I'm still going to do it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, 
since I was in the military at the mm -hmm. age of 18, mm -hmm. I picked up the habit of working out. Okay. And uh, so I've been working out ever since. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, I'm, when I got out, I was living in Manhattan and I was working out with this a good friend of mine. Okay. It's a white guy. And he started, he reads a lot. So he started talking a lot about Africa mm -hmm. and Ghana particularly, you know, the economy is doing so well. Yeah. It's been reported like the fastest growing countries mm -hmm. in the world. Ghana was part of it. Yeah. Um, this was around 2017, 2016, 2019, they about. Okay. And um, so I used to work out with that guy, right? I met him in the gym and we became like really close friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we are close friends to this day. He moved to Switzerland, I moved to Ghana. But basically, um, so he was from a really wealthy family. He's a really okay. wealthy dude. And he definitely started talking to me about a lot of things that I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about. Mm -hmm. And one of them was, uh, what do I want to do? And uh, I didn't really know, but I knew I wanted to own a business at some point. Okay. And You've always had that entrepreneurial mm. mindset. Yes. Okay. My father is really entrepreneurial and my okay. mom as well. So I see. I grew up with that. So mm -hmm. I always knew that I was going to do something, but I didn't know right. how. And so uh, we found out that gyms, mm -hmm. Ghana at the time, they didn't have a lot of gyms. So uh, when I came in, I actually went to Accra Mall. Mm -hmm. to find a space that was too expensive. It was. And then Palace Mall, they told me they were going to do it. But I see yeah. that they actually did. They weren't yeah. lying. Mm -hmm. um, that's way back. So um, we resorted to trying to buy a space. I didn't have the money, but he said he can help me raise the funds. That was your friend? Yes. Okay. He said he can help me raise the funds and stuff like that. So um, looking for properties in like developed areas in Ghana, East Lagos and Osu, that was crazy. It was too expensive. Yeah. You're talking about millions of dollars. And then COVID happened and all that. So the whole idea just, I already decided to move. Like 2019, the the, the idea of moving to Ghana was like set. Because okay. I had started, you know. Was the there any particular thing that influenced that? Because I believe you were doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, right? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Life was great. So like I said, moving to Ghana was for the gym. Okay. So I said, in order for me to move here, I have to own a house. Because okay. that's your biggest headache in mm -hmm. Ghana. Um, so I started construction in 2019. So though the gym idea just didn't go through, mm -hmm. I had already started a house. Okay. And so I had to go through it. I'm not somebody who starts something and then change yeah. your mind yeah. later. Yeah, you have I to already, finish it. Yeah, I already regardless. started a house, was very close to completing it. And I got to a point where I actually had my own money to do it because okay. I was trading the stock market. Oh, yes. so young at that age? Uh, when I moved to Ghana, I was 27. 27. So. 24. That's still pretty training. young. Yeah. And you were, you know, I'm seeing a, money. Yes, I was. I was seeing money, so I was. I was gonna be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I didn't see why not. So I moved anyways, though. The idea with my friend yeah. kind of died down. Um, yeah. So when I came to Ghana, the first thing I did was to find a property, which is a land that I ended up having a lot of issues on. I don't want to talk too much. So yeah. I'm not gonna jump. Maybe you ask me about that. <laughs> and I'll talk about it. But um, it was a gym that brought me here. And yeah, I'm into a lot of things now, but I'm still building, I'm still going to build a gym. Yeah. Starting next year, I'm going to start a construction. It's like one passion that you have to see through. Yes, I, I must own a gym. That, that has <laughs> always been like the mission. So, yeah. yeah, that is amazing. Thank you. Now, um, since coming to Ghana, you've had, you've run several businesses. I know about the plantation. Um, you've also entered into construction, selling land. You've literally now become like, a bridge for the diasporans to be able to move to Ghana, come to Ghana, acquire properties, uh, you know, enjoy the peace of mind throughout the entire process. Right. How has that been? It's been great. I mean, um, I've seen the, you know, shout out to work, you know, what you guys are doing. Yeah. I've seen the headaches way before I came to Ghana. Mm -hmm. I, you know, people sending money home to get a house built or yeah. try to buy land and getting scammed over and over again. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's a common thing. It is. So um, I, I set out to create Arcadia Limited, which mm -hmm. is the construction company with a friend of mine. Yeah. With insurances and all that stuff. So it's not just trust. Right. You are you are basically guaranteed to to do, mm -hmm. to see your building or get your money from the insurance company. Okay. So I thought that was like a pretty fair deal. But um, 
it wasn't it wasn't really it was word of mouth a friend uh father's friend or something right um so it wasn't really big until um i entered the youtube space okay um now how did that start though was it like a very random decision it was very random <laughs> i think the day I, I recorded my first video my wife thought i was possessed or something <laughs> so uh so when i came to ghana i came to ghana with quite a lot of money yeah um that wasn't a plan i was coming to ghana regardless people asked me oh you came to ghana because you have money it wasn't it's just that while I was coming to Ghana, I ended up making money. Right. So when I came, everything was set. I was going to buy this car wash that I ended up having issues on just to get to the YouTube. Yeah. Um, and then I was going to build a mini mall, have the gym in there, restaurants and all that stuff, and I was going to be good. Yeah. Um, but when I bought a car wash, an existing car wash, uh, the people who have lived there for 20 years, they had a title. Okay. I transferred the title to my name. And only when I started working, somebody started causing a lot of issues. And wow. yes, I, I ended up in court and he was able to get an injunction on the land. And mm. yeah, that put a stop to everything I was doing. And on top of it, I lost a lot of money in the stock market. Like oh, almost, no. all, almost all of it, except the ones that I used down here and maybe a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the money to do the minimal was no longer there. But I knew I can raise money. Like I, I, I'm in the financial market, so I know I know how to go about things. But okay. now I can't even build a lot on the land. So. Right. what do i do now it was pretty difficult times that was like my first year year and a half of mm -hmm. being in ghana it was pretty difficult um so i was bored which i hate i don't i'm not the kind of person that right. roam about all the time i want to be productive and what i set out to do like somebody literally put a stop to it and uh i had to wait the case was in court for two years so what do i do in the middle i actually thought about going back and then let somebody represent me in court and when okay. it's over i come back but you know i thought about it i didn't want to do it i looked at the life i have here though i don't have anything going on but you know having your house not paying rent having your car paid off yeah. and i'm leaving the car and all that stuff and going to pay rent and i've tasted Literally, freedom yes. i've tasted freedom for like three years you know i've i've made millions and now i'm going mm -hmm. back to like, it wasn't it, just didn't, it didn't sound to, it didn't sound yeah. right to mm -hmm. my to me uh so and a friend of mine the same white guy said nah i know you you can you can make it work here so just just stick at it so that's I, something i have to commend you on because a lot of people um come to ghana face a few challenges and they're out run, yeah they're <laughs> out especially it's, it's something that's very common with young people and the fact that you're able to stay you know keep your head down and keep pushing yeah. that is really amazing thank you yeah thank you so yeah, um, I was just home from day to day working out. Yes, I hated it. And then one day I don't, I, do, I myself, I don't even know what happened to me. <laughs> one day I finished with the gym, I took a shower and usually I have like very simple clothes that were in the house. But I work, I want something like this, like I'm going out. Um, and my wife looked at me like, why, why are you wearing this home? <laughs> I said, I don't know. That's not, you know, I recorded a video yeah. um, on my phone, posted on YouTube. And I was lucky because that video did really well. Okay. With my first video, I think it's almost at 20,000 views now. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and that was my first video. So I'm Good like, job. and a lot of positive yeah. um, feedback. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so I continue. And then one thing led to the other. And uh, then, you know, I, it affected my business yeah. in a positive way mm -hmm. and created several business afterwards. And, right. you know, here we yeah, are. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. And one thing that I actually am um, quite curious about, how has brokerage been in Ghana? Because like I said, you've been helping people acquire land, acquire, you know, properties. Right. How is it like, you know, being here, having to, you know, deal with people outside? It's not quite easy. Some people have never been to the country before. Right. Right. So they're like, okay, I'm trusting you. How do you instill that trust and then, you know, transparency for right. them to give you their hard earned money to right. you know, help them get their properties? Right. So, like I said, YouTube actually helps because mm -hmm. YouTube is like the library. Right. So most people that actually end up um, reaching out to me already already feel some sort of affinity and mm -hmm. kind of feel like they can see that uh, this guy is trustworthy. Right. So usually my job is really easy mm -hmm. as far as being a broker because right. I don't really have to convince people much. There's about a few people that, will, but most people come to me already have to watch a lot of my videos. Yeah. And, they just they just come to me and like i wasn't ever gonna do this again so mm -hmm. i don't have people who are done with ghana yeah but you know i'm gonna trust you to do it and the goal is to um you know just like what you guys are doing is to just bring people genuine property right. so whoever has genuine property 
Royal Kingdom included, mm -hmm. if they reach out to me. That's why I created a brokerage on the side because yeah. I'm not going to be able to go and buy land in Tamale here, right. here, here. <laughs> but I can partner with people who have genuine land mm -hmm. and bring it to the people who need it. Yeah. And it's been great. Um, yeah, it's been great. Yeah. So let's let's highlight on the tough parts a little. You right. tasted a little bit of the litigation. Right, a lot of punches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I I saw in one of your videos that you said that was actually what helped you, you know, acquire a lot of knowledge right. in the real estate space. Get to know what all of these, you know, uh, structures are. The owners, right. this and that and that. And that. Right. How how was that also? Yeah. So um, I think certain things you just cannot learn. Right. You you can only learn through experience or mirroring somebody who's going through the experience. Mm -hmm. And um, before the case of, this is not my first property, I've, you know, I've bought quite a, a bit before this case. Yeah. And I knew, okay, you get your indenture, you get a side plan, you go yeah. for a title. I knew that. But all the intricacies of allowing your owners, you know, being in possession, how important it is and all right. that stuff. You know, uh, bona fide purchaser okay. and all that stuff. Like, a lot of the stuff that govern the law, like now, I learned it through my course system. Okay. I mean, the court case that I had and the court system, just going through it, um, a lot of things came to my attention and it, it mattered to me, right? You can learn a lot if it matters to you. Hmm. If something matters to you, it just sticks. Yeah. So now my land depend on it, so I had to learn. Mm -hmm. And from that experience, I came to realize that, you know, people think it's a world, it's like, wild wild west here yes. but it's not it's not the case it's actually uh there's a system in place and if you do understand it yeah you feel quite comfortable then mm -hmm. with land and all that stuff people are figuring it out and right. actually run successful businesses okay. by acquiring land and selling like like where kingdom is doing yeah. so i i realized that and i wasn't afraid of you know land anymore you're brave and yes i was off. able to parlay that and mm -hmm. turn into a business. I see. Yeah. That is wonderful. And now to the community that you are building. Right. How is that going? It's going great. I actually just forwarded my brochure to uh to Danny. Okay. Yeah, it's going great. <laughs> uh we we did the entrance, mm -hmm. this uh security, you know, the entrance. We uh yeah. we planted the pillars. We are building the Arcadian City office. Yeah. And uh I've sold three houses already. Um, oh that's nice. Yeah. How many in total? It's a hundred homes in total. Okay. Um, excluding our office and Arcadian City Hall, it's ninety-eight. Okay. And then we sell selling plus behind it as well. That's a huge project. Yeah. That's really trying. huge. Good job. <laughs> We're trying. No, Thank you. Is. Yeah. So it's, it's going great. I can't complain. I haven't launched it yet, but the people who are aware of it, they know. They Those know. that know, they yeah. know. So yeah. they came in for a discount because the first ten houses I'm actually giving a discount. So. Okay. Those people, I three is already gone and. Mm -hmm. We have yet to launch it. Maybe in a, in a week or two we'll launch it. Okay. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you. All right. So now I'm sure people want to know um, on this front as well. First and foremost, how did you hear of Royal Kingdom Estates and how did you become? And you're a broker. I am a broker. Right? Yes. You're a part of the family. Right. How did that partnership start? Right. So well, I've seen the CEO, Danny. I've seen, I've seen a couple of his interviews on mm -hmm. other people's channels. So yeah. I was aware of him first before yeah. Royal Kingdom and then later on I started seeing you guys created a YouTube channel so <laughs> I started seeing a lot of that yeah. um and then just I already knew about you guys before you know we started talking mm -hmm. and like I said I I I don't mind taking genuine properties to people right. in diaspora because they need it if not somebody else is going to scam them sure. so it was it was it was then he has you know quite a bit of land yeah. and it was only wise for me to, you know, partner with you guys and take it to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's been great. It's been great. Uh, yeah. All the people I sent this way, I have zero complaints. They okay. are all happy. Um, I came on site about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And you guys did exactly what you said you were going to do, which is yeah. a wall. Plus, even added more to it. Mm -hmm. That was not in the plans to begin with. So... I'm always happy to work yeah. with the company and people like that. So yeah, that it's, it's been great. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Now, as a young person, you know, I mean, you're originally from Ghana, but you've come back home, and you are, I would say, one way or the other, you're giving back to the community because all of these things that you're doing, you're creating employment. You know, you're helping people collectively. What advice would you give to young people 
not necessarily diasporans, but people in Ghana who also want to venture into the entrepreneurial space because it's not easy. You've had your your own fair share of right. the struggles, but you're still pushing. And now I would say you are, you know, at the forefront of everything. Right. How would you advise them to move accordingly, especially in Ghana? Right. So the beginning is difficult, and especially in Ghana, you're not gonna get access to loans. Some people get, you know, shortcuts by right. taking loans, especially outside of. You know, national credit cards. Mm -hmm. You don't have that here in Ghana, so you have to appreciate the art of starting small, what you have. Mm -hmm. I started with my, my phone, right? Yeah. I was in a position to go buy a camera and, and waste time and try to get everything mm -hmm. right before I started. But I started YouTube with my phone, what I have. So you can just start with what you have. Um, be humble. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't want to be humble because when you start with what you have, you do have to get your fingernails dirty yeah. and really be scrappy and be patient yeah, we are not patient too so yeah. you have to be patient um while you're starting out you know other people will be doing better than you mm -hmm. and you have to see the end goal and just just walk your own path mm -hmm. just know that you're in a different time zone yeah. and your time will come but you know it's, it's difficult when it's going to be difficult in, yeah. the, in the beginning stages when your capital is small mm -hmm. the challenges you're not going to know everything you're going to you're going to face you know challenges and you have to overcome them you just have to take it easy it takes yeah. it takes patience persistence and uh there's being stubborn and knowing the end goal <laughs> and staying at it yeah if not you you'll give up yeah and also not being too um arrogant be humble try mm -hmm. to learn from others and again be humble because sometimes you know it takes humility because certain things that you have to do is kind of you have to take your ego out and, mm. and do it yeah. yes and if you have all of that skills then you do you'll be okay yeah yeah pretty much and for the people that are looking to relocate to ghana right. and starting a business most people come they just want to you know acquire a property some come in their retirement age